Here's a chimney I just uh, rebuilt. I'm going to show you how I did it. Today we're going to rip this chimney down. Uh, it's all falling apart. You can see it. Uh, I'm going to explain a little bit, show you a little more close up. You see, Pennsylvania, where I live, northeastern Pennsylvania, the weather kills a chimney. Not only that, at one time they had uh, an antenna on here. And when that antenna moves, it shakes it up and down. So you can see how bad the weather kills everything around here. That's why basically everybody's going to steel chimneys. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is tear it down and rebuild it. See, everything's shot. I'm going to talk to you a little bit over the noise. Seems like every time I got a film, the noise comes. This chimney, actually the mortar held up pretty good. Maybe they added a little formant to it. What, it. what really killed at the beginning was that TV antenna. It was, was, it's like hitting it with a hammer all the time. So, we're down to the flu. Flu's just hold on like that. We're taking everything off, but all these bricks, they disintegrate. There's nothing. See how they disintegrate? Mason area in northeastern Pennsylvania is a tough sell. That's where everything's going to stainless steel. Uh, and uh, I'll tell you a little more as we go. Getting down to the bottom, and all of a sudden I gotta start using a hammer. That means the bottom's getting pretty good. If you're a Mason, uh, you gotta fix something. Sometimes you don't rip everything down, you just go down as far, just like a tooth when you're a dentist. You, only, you don't rip the whole tooth out, you just get the bad spot. This flu's okay. This one you can see where it's rotted. They cut this with a monkey wrench, like I showed you on my other videos. That's the way they used to do it. So now I'm going to go right down to the flashing and start coming up. I'm going to show you where we're at. Right down in here, this is all solid. That's solid as a rock. This flue is good. I got a sponge with some water, get all the dust off because I want it to, to stick. Then I'm going to start my brickwork. Level from the dollar store. Put a brick in here. See, when you wet that first, that, uh, that right there. Go right into there like that. That's where my flashing is going to go. And then one in here. Let me explain something about these new bricks with the holes in them. They're throwaway bricks. In the old days, they didn't put holes in them. The only reason they got holes in them is because it's lighter to ship. So they say, well, you can't use Portland in, uh, you can't use Portland with brickwork. Well, I guess what I did, I had it. I made it uh, a bucket of sand and I put a shovel of Portland in and the rest to make up a half a bucket of uh, S mortar. So it's two to one with Portland. So I gotta compensate a little bit here. And uh, it's gonna last. Otherwise, it's not gonna last. How do I know that? I've been doing this since the 60s. See how much bigger those bricks are? Smaller they are than the old ones. So I gotta do a little jury rig in here. Bring this chimney in a little bit to compensate for that. about it. I don't know if you could see it, but look at how much difference that brick is shorter than this brick. This is the old brick, solid brick. These are the new bricks. See the difference? I got bigger joints and it's just barely going to go around the flue, so I got to compensate. Well, I'm rocking and rolling here. Let's keep on going up. I know every brick layer we all got a different way of doing it. I build a chimney. It's the way I do it. 
play all my videos, they say how I do it. And the reasons I'm doing it this way gives, gives it time to set a little bit before I throw my space in. I was gonna go high with this, real high. I'd build it out of blocks first and then I would uh, drop lines. I'm only going 15 courses high, so it's not a big deal. You know what I mean? Not a big deal. 15 courses high ain't that big. Then when I'm done with that, fill it in like this. put our cap on. We used to make our own caps. That's it, got one and three quarters all the way around. Make sure we're level and we fill it in. The water and a sponge. Let's go around the side. We'll have to check it again. In fact, I'm going to come back and check it again tomorrow. Now we're going to rake it out. I'm just going to go over it once like that to push the stuff in. Sometimes use the back of this raker. It's got a little adjustable thing for the wheels. See that? You can get a, a definite uh, depth. But this kind of uh, joint is a style. It's pretty big in the 60s and the 70s. Then they kind of got away from it a little bit. Nobody uses it. I haven't seen anybody use it in a long time. Just for repair work. And then we get our slicker. I call it a slicker. Just go over these joints, just like that. I like to press it in a little more that way, you know what I mean? Got big joints here, but I couldn't help it. The brick were smaller than the old ones. Get a little brush, brush it off. Yeah, so that's it. I'm pretty much done from this angle. And we look way over there. Just thank God I ain't on that chimney. Now that's old school building right there. <laughs>